So uh, welcome everybody to um, the eleventh of these things that originally got called lectures, but we sussed out ages ago. That's far too pretentious a name for them. They're just explorations inspired by soul waves insertions. This one's inspired by Elfland, which is the eleventh insertion, uh, where I had a lot of fun um, uh, imagining what happens when COVID thirty eight finally gets eradicated in twenty thirty nine. Yeah, it's a lovely prequel to Soul Waves because I used uh, Gia, uh, Shen's mother from the original book, uh, as an 11 year old girl uh, in the Spectacle Lakes in, uh, what was it, uh, Fragrant Hills Park near Beijing. And, and that was her gateway to the underworld. Uh, and it's, oh, it's a long time ago since I wrote that. That's got to be, when's that now? What year are we in? 2021? So, so I wrote that uh, well over a year ago. And, uh, you know, 11, more than 11 months later, it's now led to uh, an ambient track called Elven Land and a, and a, a guided track coming out in a couple of weeks' time. But uh, I'm joined today by Suzanne Elston, the wise woman from Canada and a wise woman from Norway, Siri Offley. How are you both? Good. And, and tell me, how are, how are the fairies, the elves, and the goblins, and even the trolls appearing in your worlds at the moment? We have had the most massive abundance of mushrooms this fall. I've never uh -huh. seen anything like it. Uh -huh. um, and you know, mushrooms circles, little condos, like, all like running around on my belly, little time taking pictures of these things. It's been a very magical fall here because it's been very long, um, and you you have a sense that there's something percolating there unseen but definitely present it's been quite a quite a magical fall here and there's quite a lot of scientific research coming out how that the mushroom layer is the neurons that connect trees together you've seen that stuff yeah yeah it's fabulous yeah we just find so much out about how the world really really works aren't we and uh you know it's, it might be a small step but you know maybe um materialistic science is 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 about to really appreciate the overworld and the underworld and our place in the middle of the two. And how's magical Norway, Siri? And always, always magical, as you know, it, the land of the fairy tales and the gnomes and the trolls. We're very close to this in our fairy tale culture. We tell children fairy tales when we grow up. And uh, I feel like uh, this is an old uh, culture that really takes the future into what you just said about mixing up and believing in everything and the whole complete uh, over and underworld into like one whole ecosystem so to speak so uh, i've grown up with fairy tales and i also have to say like in the, the places i've lived they have been very thin places so it's very close between our world and the underworld and speaking of mushrooms i also speak to trees Suzanne, and they uh, they are so sad for instance when their neighbors are cutting down the tops of the trees just to see the sunlight or just because they're afraid they're going to fall over they, they don't ask nature or elves or fairies or the trees soul to permit or to have permission to cut them down they just um, crop them the way they feel like it i feel that the trees are sad and they're very uh, spokes friendly to me that i say that this is this is awful and they also speak to the neighboring trees in our garden and speaking of the mycoma that you mentioned tom the tom the, the uh, mushroom uh, environment below the ground they're speaking to each other the trees and i can feel them comforting each other oh, oh it's going to be okay or you just have to let it go because she cut the top of you and now you have to slowly die so it's it's very close in my whole life we've been very close to little elves and fairies that people might say to me that you're crazy you're speaking to them but they come into our houses and they temper with our electronics and they stop the dishwashers and washing machines and and temper with their our cars and then and uh, we can talk to them and i can uh, anyway and ask them to be good to our family and stop making us laugh because that's their intention to make us laugh so that's my relationship to the magic and also the aurora borealis very much everything is connected here in norway hmm. 
now it's very remiss of me um happy birthday for yesterday how was your magical birthday thank you <laughs> thank you and thank you for your gifts and your cards and ee -E cards and everything and the drawings coming back to me so it's very good i'm very happy thank you fantastic so um what's to when you start talking about the fairies and the elves and the goblins it's okay if you're jk rowling's or you know someone that's writing um uh fictional stuff but when you start talking about them as if they're real, what's to stop people thinking you're absolutely bonkers? <laughs> Good questions. I don't know. <laughs> we have um, the house that I live in is very, very young by um, British standards. It's it's only 200 years old. But for this country, it's old. Eight, yeah. um, and it's quite haunted. Um, and it's haunted by um, my husband's family has been in the house since it was built in 1827. So it's not quite 200 years old. Mm -hmm. um, but the people that were here are very benign and very kind um, and just want to look out for um, everything for everyone to make sure everything's OK. And it's interesting because we've I've had I mean, usually it's just us when they show up, but um, I've had. Uh, cases when I've had friends over and, uh, you know, grandpa looks in the window and they all freak out. And I mean, the, the fairy world and the underworld, I mean, you, you mentioned in, 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 in one of, um, I think it was in the 11th, it may have been one of the other, uh, one of the other um, uh, speaks that you talked about the fact that there are some people just hanging around that just don't want to leave yet. So there's a, there's a bit of an element of that, but we recently had a situation where my father showed up rather loudly um, and we had friends over and I said, oh, go, here we go. And it was like, well, what was the noise? And I said, well, you know, it's my dad. And I didn't know these people that well. And they burst out laughing and the man had grown up in a haunted house. So we started talking about all of these things and things moving around and, and good things and bad things. And I think it's, it's really, there's a, an old expression. It's there. We just have to perceive it. And, and we are so focused on as you mentioned from from the fairyland to the science once we got the science we kind of abandoned the natural science and this mm -hmm. is what i think is there when we're finally getting back in touch with it now mm. and actually I, I, I was reading something by a, a, a guest i had on the podcast a few a few times now armit Kazwami. he's a professor of quantum physics and he was writing about how actually quantum physics is our key to the underworld and it's the key to explain so much about what is consciousness and not just the underworld but the the overworld as well to the higher planes of consciousness wow. and siri and i are having great fun at the moment with the um with the tarot and uh, and creating a new deck and we really felt it was important to create a new suit which actually acts um you know it's, it's the suit we call it the suit of overstanding and it, uh, I'm starting to write it up now into, in, in book form. And it's making me realize that it's actually the gateway, not just to the higher realms, but also to what we call the lower realms as well. But actually the terms higher and lower um, it give a hierarchical sense to it, but they're, they're of equal importance. And they're, they're also linked together. It's just that we're kind of stuck in the middle. And as I say, with materialistic science, as you, as you concur, we've let the magic go. So what's your... What would you share as secrets to let the magic back into your worlds? Don't all answer at once. Well, uh, <laughs> meditation is, I think, very important. Mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. um, sitting in silence, um, walking in nature. Um, last so summer, you actually, you actually answered the question by being silent, didn't you? You both, you both naturally went silent. Yeah. Yes, I had no so answers, that... but connecting to water is one thing that is very important. Interesting. Yeah. Because we're all water, we were going back to water anyway, so that's where we need to find the peace and the silence that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Now that's really interesting because before you joined us in the pre-chat, uh, if anyone does these sessions, Zooms or whatever, before we go live, there's, there's always a bit of pre-chat where we sort out the technical gremlins and we make sure the fairies aren't actually messing up with the wires and this sort of stuff. And uh, and Suzanne, we're talking. Uh, we're talking about the 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 new tarot that we've been designing, and actually how um, uh, now I'm writing it up a bit. 
there may be elements where you might want to go back to some of the uh, keys uh, and, and add some more symbolism and that's but there's lots of space around them to do all of that mm -hmm. but actually other than just a few keywords i've actually told you very little about each of the um, cards which is interesting mm -hmm. and without any prompting from me and you were quite anxious about this in an email you sent me in the week without any prompting from me you said for the suite of understand overstanding you will use the water element won't you yes yeah, yeah. I was and, so and, I, the yeah, water. yeah and i didn't know that so my words didn't mention water or no. fluidity or anything like that in them but you no. came up with the with the water metaphor all the way very consistent now i've seen about 14 or so of the uh of the, yeah. of the cards so 10 of the 10 of the 15 cards and uh just before we got on I've, I've just i've just built the ambient layer to go behind it with whales and and seagulls right. and all sorts of things so i'm actually ready to to record that right now but oh, this well, this well. this water element um you know this is that thing that gives us we we are so much water aren't we Mm, we are, and we have so much space too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so silence and water. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And how far are you from the coast, Siri, roughly? Uh, I have five minutes walk in the e western direction, and I can dip my toes in the sea. Okay, and how about you, Siri? That is in a fjord, and the, yeah. the open ocean is about one hour away driving. Okay, yeah. Um, I'm on the shore of Lake Ontario which is one of the great lakes in Canada. Um, and I can see the lake in the, on the horizon. It's about two, two kilometers due south of me, but there's a lot of farmland between that. But we have um, um, a large wetland near us, and it's a bit of a drive. It's like a 10-minute drive. It's not far. Yeah. That's where I like to go and sit. And I will sit for hours and just listen to the water. Um, and on the various days, it can be as wild as the ocean, you know, crashing mm -hmm. waves and and other, wow. and other things. What's really neat about it is there's a, it's part of General Motors of Canada. They have this big, it, it's closed now, but they have this big office building there. And you could hear, when you walk down to the water, you could hear the, um, I guess, the fans on the building, the HVAC system on the building. And when you got halfway to the lake, you couldn't hear the building anymore, but you couldn't hear the water yet. So there was like this, holy silence mm. and and i noticed it several times that when you get away from industrial noise yeah. and then you find natural noise somewhere in the middle there's this fairyland this magical place where anything can happen this bubble of yeah. no sound other than birds lots of birds mm. so well, it's kind of called a uh, constructive interference isn't it where you get one uh, sound cancelling out of the other one yeah. so i know there's been cases where Whales have got lost in beach because of the industrial sounds and possibly even the uh, sonar from submarines as well. And that's really confused the uh, the life under the sea. It's confused them because they've not adjusted to these awful sounds. Uh, but there's a lot more understanding now about all of that, which is, uh, is, is kind of good. Now, I live on, so I'm, I'm actually quite away from the uh, the water, but I'm on a, on, a, on a hill. And I guess I've installed my own water feature in the, in the form of a hot tub recently which is where we tend to relax of an evening which is a, a good place to connect but you spoke about thin places and um very interesting that we all kind of live in a, a thin place how much do you think we as humans meditating humans and and humans that allow quiet into our lives can create the thin place itself uh, I think we can do that uh, either very consciously or deeply unconsciously or subconsciously because some of us knows that we are channels and are able to uh, master in some degree to open up places. But then again, others, they're not aware of their channeling abilities and they don't know that it's actually them who is thin, thinning out things around them. So it's very interesting. We have certain TV programs here in Norway where you see people uh, being surprised by their own energies and, wow, did, can I do that? And yes, you can. You just have to open to it. Oh, no, it scares me. So it's very, uh, people are very on the edge about uh, curiosity, about the theme of thin without knowing that thin is a thing. So that's my experience around it. And I, I have experienced that 
I am a shadow. I'm, I'm supposed to be making things thinner for people to get closer to their true natures and build a bridge for them between themselves and their past and futures and places where they live and their purpose in life. So that's my experience. And what about you, Suzanne? I am. Um... I see my my that ability, and you're absolutely right, Siri. The first time I met you was like, this woman's a, an elf. I swear. Um, my <laughs> my 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 writing was always my vehicle to try to get people to perceive things a little bit differently and take something as simple as a cornfield and see it as um, you know a magical that that our, our little piece of property was a magical island. We were. You know, we were we were um, Avalon, um, and and there's that element. But I had I was a musician for many years, and I kept with me a cartoon that I had as a child. Uh, there used to be something called Broom Hilda, and there was Erwin the Troll, and he walks into the forest and he sets up his music stand, and he taps the music stand and he starts conducting, and there's music coming from all of the trees, and then he pulls his music stand, and the only dialogue in this cartoon is he turns and he says, "It's always there. You just have to know how to find it." Um, and so it's pointing um, all the time, saying, "Have you thought about this?" or "Have you thought about that?" or leading by crazy example. Um, we saw last last summer here was terrible. We had terrible drought. We lost a lot of our trees, um, and there's a lot of invasive trees here. And there's an orchard, an abandoned orchard near us, and it was a beautiful Canadian pine. It was an indigenous white pine, and it was dying. Half the leaves were red. It was on its way out. And we were walking one day, and there was a woman, and 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 she said, "I'm sorry. I I I hope I hope this is okay." And she had holy water. And she was praying for the tree and she had her arms around the tree and she was putting holy water on it. And uh, when we went back the spring, the tree was fine. So mm -hmm. it's, it's just, it's so there. Um, but I think we are so terrified um, of things that go bump in the night. It goes back to our primordial amygdala. You know, it, we're in the cave and it's scary and if it makes a noise, so that's why you can be in a room with full light and you're fine and you turn off the light and everybody's scared. It's mm -hmm. being able, that surety. And <laughs> the only thing we know about life is nothing sure. Nothing's mm -hmm. permanence. And maybe that's, I think, the long answer to the short question, Tom. It's about embracing impermanence. And when you can do that, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned about impermanence then. Um, because I guess we never really we we think of the the higher realms and the angels and the archangels and and the like these and the council of the light as being effectively immortal. We've obviously got our cycle of life. Uh, our our we're, we're infinitely immortal souls, but we might have just the odd um, blip down here and then pop back and have another go at it. What do you think about the uh, fairy realms? Are they immortal? Do they have long lives? They have short lives? What's their time scale? Their temporal nature? I had a a message coming through me, uh, walking home just before this meeting, and giving me memories of early childhood and my relationship to the fairies, and also things string in and out of my growing life, so to speak becoming 49 <laughs> and remembering the first time I um, uh, uh, encountered the elves was driving in a car on the day after a party. I was 19, 20-ish, something like that. It was very cold, suddenly very cold, and the humid uh, weather uh, had caused the water to uh, evaporate over a very cold lake. So we saw the Frost uh, smoke. What do you call that in English? I don't have a term for it. It's, I don't think we have it as a phenomenon. Um, it's yeah. called hoar frost. frost. When everything's hoar frost, yeah, yeah, hoar frost, yeah. Hoar frost, yes. And it, and that's the first time they were dancing on the frozen. It was not a frozen lake. It was warm water and the frozen air. So yeah. it close to snowing, but it was kind of like a meter tall frost snow, something like that. And those were the fairies. And go, going back to my walk today, uh, 
uh, my impression of butterflies and um, flies in summer, they have very short lifespan, but they're very intense and they're very close into our thin uh, naked skin in summer. That's the only way I can describe it because they're very close and very intense and very um, their lives are very important and the message they come with is very important for us to get because it's about taking chances and embracing intemperance like you say and being a child and taking every impulse and every joy and every moment you have like the treasure they are and just be there and because boom it's gone and I'm getting goosebumps telling you about this because butterflies and uh, dragonflies and fairies and everything is very entwined so I actually paint and draw fairies with children's bodies and the wings of the insects and butterflies and everything and that's my relationship to it and I can feel when a butterfly flies by it feels like a spiraling energy that tries to catch me and, or latch onto mine and then tell me you're alive you're alive that's the way they're speaking to me so now everything is now so that's my connection to it and i, I guess there's a massive much massive tradition <laughs> with the you know uh, with peter pan and what have you with all that kind of symbolism mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah the um the idea of um quite often they talk about trains lining up that different realities are such that when the when the windows of the train line up and you can see through mm -hmm. have you ever heard that analogy before um so the <laughs> idea is that things are passing you know the trains are passing each other at terrific speed but it's at, at one point they slow down and the windows line up you can see into that world mm -hmm. um and i think there's a lot of that um marianne zimmerman bradley wrote a book called the miss of avalon um, and she was talking about Arthur in a world when we, all this stuff was very, very, it was there, it was real, it was part and parcel before we got science. Um, but she talks about the idea of Arthur's world, that Avalon is on a different timeline, that things can line up at some point. So um, the fairies live in tense, your, 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 your question, Tom, they live in a different timeline. They, they, they sink differently from us. Um, and then occasionally that lines up and we see them or we sense them because our our timeline or our, how we perceive time or how we exist in time for a split second or two lines up with them. And I think to me, that's what it is. It's, it's, it's that alignment. Um, there's a fabulous episode of Star Trek. I'm a big Trekkie. Um, Star Trek Next Generation where they get caught in different... Um, uh, hurts if you will and so for some of the crew they appear like flies people are what's what's what what's that mm -hmm. and for the people who are in this sped up existence everyone is frozen because they mm -hmm. are moving so slowly relative to and i think that's what it is i think there's a there's enough in literature for us to to kind of look at it and go yeah i think that's what it is i think we're just we need, and that's why meditation, silence, looking at clouds, all of those things open, taking a walk, all of those things open the door, removing the, the artificial construct of time that we've created and just allow ourselves to be in this time right now. Well, that's interesting because uh, sometime in the week, actually last week, um, uh, Siri and I have been slavishly manually posting our just for today messages for yeah. 2017 and and in, in a in a, a, a conversation that siri uh had offline with me she said well can you do these uh you know is there any software you can use to line them all up and i said yeah but i, I thought it was really expensive because last time i looked at this there was one called hootsuite and for what we were to do it's just a silly old price so i looked into some of the modern day um offerings and found a fantastic one called post planner and uh, we get some lovely comments, don't we, when we do our Just For Today's uh, uh, Siri. And uh, I just had to test it out uh, before we went live. So I just found a picture I took uh, literally outside my office here of some clouds. And I said, and I just said, Just For Today, what do you see in the clouds? Boy, the number of comments we got on that one. <laughs> yeah. 
Indeed. And it just shows us that, you know, we've been doing this, we've been putting a lot of effort into the words of the art, but actually all we can do to do is to look at our photo album and just put one line. What do you think of this? And it takes people to a different place. Everyone came up with a slightly different answer, which is great. But it took people, and it had the effect that you're talking about, Susanna. It just took people out of now, you know, being locked into their screens. As I said somewhere else, there's only one thing that beats to the second, and that's the mind of someone watching the clock. Yes. So, as soon as you stop watching the clock, then is that when we get into fairy time? Mm, that's right. Yeah. I don't um, think so. Oh, so I, I think I need to create it because I've created three time zones. You know, you got we've got GMT over here, Greenwich Mean Time, and you have Eastern Standard Time. So in uh, my book, Managing Time Mindfully, I've got EMT, which is Extended Me Time. Then I've got IMT, which is Inner Me Time or inner mind time, and then uh, OMT, which is outer mind time. So perhaps we need mm -hmm. FMT, which is uh, fairy mind time. Or... Yeah, fun. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'll go there. <laughs> I guess we've talked about fairies a lot, but obviously we've got um, elves, goblins, and, and trolls. And uh, uh, out of nowhere, uh, I've got a meditation which goes live on this full moon, uh, the next um, the next meditation in the Soul Waves Insertions uh, uh, series. Uh, where I've um, come up with ways you can uh, use the um, uh, tap, tap into the the underworld and specific tasks you could give to them. So fairies for when you want uh, some really out of this world left field magic. You know, you just want, I just want a bit of fairy dust to come into my world. I don't, don't want to be specific about it. And then uh, elves you can use for wisdom because they are wise, and goblins you can use for uh, for 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 how to apply that wisdom and trolls who get a really bad rap in literature don't they they're evil and horrible mm. you can use for when you want to get something done you know they can move trees around and this sort of this sort of stuff do we think then that fairies elves goblins and trolls maybe have different relationships with time yeah well for trolls in norway they're very large and very heavy and moving slowly so i think like you said susan they live in a different timeline again mm -hmm. and when they see a fairy it, it uh, may be like when we do because mm -hmm. i feel the trolls are some kind of part of um, human nature really that really and the trolls is... in norway are they mountain creatures or are they forest creatures or do you get forest trolls yeah. and mountain trolls both actually they had trees growing up here and there and they're really tall like a half a mountain tall and not living in caves but walking around in forests frightening people because like you uh, we said the the uh, ignorance about them is more like oh i'm scared of the trolls instead of talking to them because they can talk to people mm -hmm. and in fairy tales they often do too but it's like more like beating the troll and the inner troll in you is supposed to be beaten and get out of the way and then you can live your life so i don't think the fairy tales is all imagination fantasy they are just guidelines for us to find the different parts of our nature and that, therefore i also think that they're related in some way without us seeing it completely all of us uh, i think so mm. What, what about, about goblins? goblins? Yeah, goblins. I wish I could remember the Norwegian word for goblin. Oh. Just don't tell us about goblins. <laughs> mm. Well, they tend to be the the forgers. They're the alchemists, aren't they? They're the the, the they're the ones that work the um, the forges and all that kind of stuff. Mm. No, I, I don't think I have a special. I don't, I don't get the feeling I know anything about them, really. Not, not well, that brings, up another, that brings up another thing we can explore is that different people are maybe diff attuned to the different underworld energies. Yeah, it seems like it. It seems like all blur to me when you say goblin. Because I'm, I'm a, a, a standard uh, family joke we have is I have clients that call me Dumbledore, who's the uh, the, the wizard teacher yeah. in Harry Potter, but my better and much wiser half, Louise, calls me Dobby the house elf at the weekend. Oh, I love that. Yeah, 
So, uh, you know, exactly. like, Bobby, what, you, what were you thinking of doing this weekend? Whatever it was, you don't do wizardly things because I've got some jobs for you, right? So, yeah. and I, I've always been accused of being quite mischievous. So I must have an elvish uh, nature to me, which just yeah. comes out of the pores. You can't help, but it just leaks out. Now, where do pixels fit into all of this? Well, good question. Because I mean, are, are there, as, as a friend, we said we got mountain trolls and we got forest trolls. We must have all different flavors. In the same way, we got loads of different flavors of people and and insects and all the different animals. There must be loads of different uh, types. I'm not an expert in any of these things. So, what are the pixies? Are they sort of maybe they're they're intermediaries between fairies and, and elves? I don't. I was always told that was pixelated. Always as a child, that oh, she's pixelated. Yeah. Like it was a derogatory thing, and I was like, "That's really cool. I like that." Uh -huh. So, I, but I just you don't necessarily hear them. You know, when they talk about elves, you talk about fairies, but pixies don't get mentioned that often, and yet I feel kind of pixelated. Still do. Good question. That's a good yeah. question. Yeah. Well, maybe we could ask them. You know, so another way of doing this. This is a um, a postulation. Is if we don't know something about something, hmm. if you imagine that it's real and you ask them, so you know we could each each of us this weekend perhaps. Uh, and normally, when you say I'm getting pixelated at the weekend, it means something completely different. But uh, <laughs> uh, we could ask the pixies to show themselves, and 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 that's one way. And if, if anyone's interested in, in the fairies, the elves, the goblins, the trolls, or whatever other mythological creatures you can think of. Just ask for them to show themselves and see yeah. what shows up. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Yeah, and let's report back. This is this will be uh, inside the Facebook group, so we can actually just report back on what 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 occurs. I'm actually going into quite an urban environment tomorrow, which is kind of interesting. Going back to a town with lots of people, with, you know, so it's be the first mass gathering I'm going to for a long, long time. What, oh. COVID and what have you um so that'd be interesting so i've got a day in the garden and a day in a in a in inside a, a, a large town in a, in a conference center oh. so it'd be interesting to see what what those two juxtapositions of places bring up i've got a i've got a celebration of life tomorrow oh, okay um, and it's the first big sort of thing i've been at and i i think i'm meeting with a certain amount of trepidation um is my mother yeah. Um, and it, it, she was quite um, um, very much in touch with the other world. Never, never very, very, very practical cockney woman. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, you know, the people show up. Yeah, they're dead. Okay, that's fine. Move on. So it'd be very interesting to see. Um, I'm definitely going to take my inner pixie with me tomorrow and see what comes okay. up. Yeah. And, uh, and as she's taken a step to the other side now, she might be able to assist in that, um, in that exploration for you. Yeah, I think yeah. that'd be fun. Wow. Yeah. And Siri, so, do you have any um, on, on the pixie realm? I have a, a question because at first, it's pixie, uh, Suzanne, I lost the word. And then you pixeled up. <laughs> you get blurred. And is the, how is that word spelled? Is it like P-I-X-I-E? Yes. Like a pixie? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And pixelated is the same spelling. Okay. Yes, because it's funny because uh, my youngest son, he's twelve, and he's playing a game called uh, Minecraft, and it's used in pixels. You see cubes that you build. So I was thinking, is that something got to do with it that things get uh, parted or built in a new way, or was it? What does pixelated mean for you? Uh, does it have any relationship to being? moved into another dimension or can you do something about the dimensions and what is it really meaning for me pixelated meant um uh the, and again this is why i was asking between various and elves it, it's like an immature fairy you're kind of okay. fluttering around and being silly and being nonsensical and and um, being pixel like so the idea of being pixelated yes yeah, sorry <laughs> It's life. Right? Uh, my, my grandson plays Minecraft, so I'm, I'm familiar yeah. with it. And I think it, it's it's kind of sad because, again, yeah. science and, and technology has taken this wonderful, ethereal, funny, laughing thing and created these little tiny boxes of things. And 
pictures get pixelated yeah. and you know the computer gets pixelated and mm -hmm. kids are playing these games in pixels whereas yeah. it was um it, to me it was always like a butterfly flying around you know being yeah, pixelated. yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, like, so just a quick just done a quick bit of um wikipedia research so as a, a, a pixel is a picture element is short for picture element so the right now yeah. so let's say you've got um, a screen a 4k screen that means you've got four thousand or so pixels on it oh, yeah. um or four four thousand horizontal pixels a pixie <laughs> and there's even a, a swedish word for it here which is p-s-y-k-e very pixie uh they look like they're um Kind of really the <laughs> they're the naughty kids on the block in the fairy realm it looks like yeah. they're, the, they're the fairies that are being kicked out of the garden because they're quite mischievous and they seem to have a they, they it says it's a mythical creature of british folklore uh concentrated in the high moorland around devon cornwall uh, suggesting celtic origin um i guess what this um alludes to is that with these realms, which we assume are external to us, and the higher realms, the angelic realms and, and the like, are they kind of figments of our own imagination and consciousness? And do they exist if we don't exist? Good question. Very good question. Because people say that uh fairies and elves and things little people that we call them here in here yeah. in norway they've been uh, uh, spoken about for generations and everyone says it. They, they've been here always mm -hmm. and uh, it's an inter interesting question that you say there because uh, what if a chain of relations in a family gets broken and then the tradition doesn't move on what happens to the fairies and the elves then? That's mm -hmm. a good question. Mm. And in Ireland, they have they have leprechauns in Ireland, don't they? Yeah. And they're yeah. supposed to be quite mischievous, but also they're the ones that can lead you to the pot of gold. They're the elves, mm. yeah. 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 So, so if we've got a mischievous aspect to our nature, um, yeah. and are the pixies something we've um, kind of? design that they an offshoot of this mischievousness like almost like discarnate thought forms that hang around and distill into the air now and again get picked up by other people is it possible too that it, it was a creation for discipline mm -hmm. you know we think of we collectively think of these things as wonderful and uh, mind expanding and thought expanding and dimension expanding but you know, if somebody was, as you said, the British terminology, if someone was kind of chucked up by the fairies, um, were these things, I mean, when I was told I was pixelated, it wasn't necessarily always in a good light because I was disruptive. Mm -hmm. um, and so do we would you create these, these things um, as a method of control? Does it go back to this? You know the amygdala flight or fight live in the cave if we don't know what it is we have to either be afraid of it or explain it off in a different way you know the old if a tree mm -hmm. falls in the forest does anybody hear it you know does it make a sound um mm -hmm. and and science will say no it doesn't make a sound at all the sound is in our ears so to to expand that a bit i feel like i'm in the weeds here but is it are, do we man have we manifested it and and when we are if we're not here does that manifestation still exist and i'm saying yes so in which case it could pre-exist um they could pre-exist humanity or the other flip side is have they have they manifested um humans yes and um, yeah, are they are they our ancestors? Are they our primeval the primeval force that's brought us to to bear well, alongside the uh, the angelic realms as well? Hmm. Yeah. And if we are planted here to to um, to sort of talk about some of the stuff that you've written about and the idea of of uh, the council and and civilizations different different epochs and stuff sort of being created and planted mm -hmm. in and nurtured along are they are they are they were they our guardians were they our um 
sort of planted there as, as, as our teachers uh, before we had our own science and our own language and our own paradigms of, of control and explanation. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess the, my, the biggest source of information I got in this regard um, was uh, Cosmic Memory by Rudolf Steiner that kind of came out of the Madame Blavatsky and Re Isis Remembered or Revisited uh, books. And, you know, the idea there is that uh, what we, th we, we are what we call humans and science says that, you know, humanoids have been on the planet for millions of years, but we only got self-awareness maybe a million or two million years years ago religion has a different narrative of course but then that's fine for religions um but but the idea is in cosmic memory uh which comes comes out of that sort of the off the offices sort of camp is that humans have been around forever but not incarnate which is why i invoke the idea of the 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 egg so much in in soul waves and i noticed the recently that in a, in bill and ted's latest adventure i've not seen the film but i've seen the the, uh, the the preview to it, they got an egg in that as well, which is kind of interesting, which seems to transcend all all space and time. So uh, the idea is that, you know, humans were around, but just floating around as ethereal things before we incarnated. And and I guess then what's split off from that is the, the, the underworld realms that we talk about. Hmm. And, you know, one, one bit incarnated, another bit sort of just hangs around, hangs around as, as wisps on the wind and other elements sort of float in in the metaphorical clouds but it's all aspects of the same one apart from us that have redensified and forgotten about this the, all this other these other layers apart from when we have the silence apart from when we go meditation apart from when we we just look at the clouds or listen to the water but if you look at you look at a very old person talking to a very young baby they completely get each other Mm -hmm. uh, children when they're born mm -hmm. know it all right Siri? i mean my my three-year-old son told us um one day that he knew what the last number was and we went well you know sure what is it he said it's zero if you think about it it all comes back back, back around to the beginning again he was mm -hmm. three so mm -hmm. i think that idea of closer to source we get it and then we forget tom we do because mm -hmm. we're afraid of the cave, you know. Well, I know we, it, yeah, a baby will uh, obviously the baby still strengthens his, his neck muscles and things like that. But babies look all around at a person; they see the aura, don't they? Yeah. You see, babies oh, looking yeah. at—they don't just look at your face; they look around you because they're seeing the whole uh, the, the whole glory of, of someone's aura, which is great. And then, as we densify, we we lose the ability to see the aura, which is kind of interesting. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I, I absolutely think that. That we forget who we are, and then we have to get you know go back. The, the road for us is mm -hmm. we're here for whatever reason, and that's individual. But we have to figure out how to get that move back and move towards the light. Wow. Yeah. Well, listen. Anyone that watches this uh, back and replay, it would be great to see your comments about all of this stuff because you you probably mm -hmm. noticed by our, our ramblings that we're not experts. That's why we, I think it's too pretentious to call this a lecture <laughs> at all. But I'd love to get everyone else's experience in, on on all of this stuff. And uh, I've got to I've got to I've got to pat myself on the back for something. Um, and I've got to thank a lady called uh, Chantel Cornelius uh, about a year ago this uh, November. I, she's a marketing expert and does amazing marketing sessions every odd Monday uh, on Zoom, which is great. And I took took to her this notion I was going to publish this book with 12 short stories. And that the, the age-old problem, that, you know, is one thing writing and publishing a book, but it's another thing how you promote the book. And she said, well, don't do a launch by all means, she said, but you've got 12 stories. There's, there's 12 months in the year. Why don't you just do something every month and i already plan to do an ambient track every month inspired by the number i already plan to do a meditation every month inspired by the number. Said, well, why don't you do one of these calls so we're now 11 in of of 12 um managed to make most of them we found out about halfway through that it was just too much to try and do this on the new moon and do everything else so the timing's yeah. been a bit random bear, bearing in mind our availability but we're kind of coming up to the 12th one and i just love to ask both of you, uh, Louisa, who might, uh, I know is going to join us as well, uh, and anyone that's listening, what would you like to hear and see in the 12th one? We're going to talk about the number 12. 
I managed to get myself a uh, 12 sided die. How about that? Mm-hmm. That's a bit of kit, isn't it? I'm so, huge on the winter solstice, Tom. Say again? I, yeah, the, to me, that's the new year. It's it's just, I would yeah, love that's it. That's a good idea. We, it, we could time it around then. Could that be that would be yeah. the first thing we could do, couldn't we? Which is, um, that's going to be Tuesday the 21st. Right. Well, that, that's that's one question. And, of course, 21 backwards is 12, so that works well. Mm-hmm. So 20, 21, 12, 20, oh, we got the ones, the twos, we've got everything in that uh, that yeah. date. And, we'll and do it. Uh, like you said, Suzanne, returning to the light. Uh, winter solstice is when the turning point of everything, tipping point in the year, when things go from being pitch black, dark, to hoping things again so i hope is one thing and also number 12 being the number of counselors that you've been writing about tell mm-hmm. us more about them and the fact that they are in fact here <laughs> even though you say they are imaginated they are here so come okay. into that right. realm too so let's let's we haven't done this explicitly i think that this is so good i can't tell you how good it is to to have you you uh both on board for all this, so involved and entrenched in it all. Let's talk about the councillors next time. Yeah. And actually get the councillors to talk through as well. So um, one thing I've not done for a long time is actually um, channel live. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to suggest anyone, anyone that watches this over between now and the 21st of December, if you've got a question, put it in below. We will answer it live and ask the council to come and do a a, a, a live answer how about that so we'll really expand the, uh, the 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 kind of stuff that we do in these things which is interesting and i know they like the fairies like the underworld they want to be heard and they want to they want us to um, be listening and to to ask and and if we ask they'll come back and they'll give us answers and mm. uh, things that are useful to us so let's uh, let's do this uh, so it sounds like we're going to do lots on that day but let's uh, honor the let's honor the council who have uh, gifted these stories who want to be heard and actually have also created this uh, environment for us to to enjoy this heaven on earth. Wow. Wonderful. Well, thank you both. Uh, thanks thank for um, sorting out the next day, the next agenda, and uh, we'll see you in a, in less than a month's time. Probably, Unless you just it's no, it's a bit more than a month's time, isn't it? Looking forward to it. All right. Take great care. Take care. Thanks, Thanks Tom. Bye. 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 Bye